Welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. So happy that you decided to tune in and join us for another great edition today. We are so happy to be joined by Senator Nancy Bartow, and she is a state senator in District 15, and she is the chair of Health and Human Services Committee. Thank you so much for joining us, Senator Bartow. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yes, it's always wonderful to have you. I know our viewers always enjoy things you have to share. And uh, for anyone watching, just quickly, District 15, if you wouldn't mind telling people where that is. Sure. District 15 is basically North Phoenix. Takes in a little bit of Scottsdale, some Cave Creek folks, and Glendale as well. Um, it's uh, between Carefree Highway and about Bell and Scottsdale Road to about 67th Avenue on the west side. Okay. So I've been serving in the legislature for 11 sessions now. It's wow. gone by pretty fast, but it's been an, an incredible opportunity to serve the people and as a Christian uh, to, to really make a difference um, on our issues. Absolutely, because your political career got started a little differently than, than most. It was kind of something where you were involved and you were a parent and, and it, it was very unconventional the way you got started and God kind of put you there. I think it is. <laughs> uh, actually, everybody's wrote to, uh, to service in the public uh, realm seems a, to have their own yes. story, I've, I'm finding out. But I started out as a mom. I yes. raised our, our three daughters, my husband and I, and we were always very involved politically and trying to elect good people to office that aligned with our values. Um, but yeah, I was appointed to office after um, about 25 years of not being in the workforce and uh, have just found it an amazing uh, place to serve. And you know, I didn't have any public service um, experience mm -hmm. before that. Um, except raising my kids, which I think prepared me pretty well for a lot of, a lot of issues. Yes, absolutely. And so it's one of those things where whenever God has a plan for you, then it happens, right? <laughs> so it's so nice to see that you've, you've stepped into that calling and, and you've embraced it and you've done so much with your position that, that, you've, that you have. And uh, thank you for all the work that you do down at the legislature and um, to, to all of our senators and all of our elected officials. I, I know that there's, there's a lot of weight that comes with the position and it's so important. I'm assuming that you appreciate the people that pray for you and, and pray for your family and, and the difficulties that come with that. I couldn't do it without that, to be honest. And what's really quite amazing is, you know, the issues we deal with are very difficult. And I depend on the Lord working um, in concert with us because yes. He is the one that brings people at just the right time and gives us information, it just seems, that are that is just exquisite for us to pass bills and, and move move the state in the direction that I think we need to go. And I've just seen him work over and over again. So I know the power of prayer personally from, from this experience, and I do appreciate them every day. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here, Senator Bartow. And thank you so much at home for watching, as always. Today we are speaking about civic affairs, and our first issue is welcoming the mentally ill. Um, mental illness, uh, pro provide a little background. and. Why does the issue deserve attention? Well, it's, it's really finally getting some attention, the, the attention that it deserves, um, both in Congress and by many of the states. Um, because for one thing, um, it's, let me just give you a little bit of background. Yes. It started about 53 years ago when President John F. Kennedy, he had an initiative of deinstitutionalization in America. The institutions for the mentally ill back then were horrendous, and people were treated like animals. So there was a, a great effort to end that type of treatment. Um, however, now the institutions that uh, basically uh, care for the mentally ill are called jails and prisons mm -hmm. because we haven't we haven't gotten it down yet yes. and so we're still failing on a lot of levels to serve the families of those with very serious mental illness and we're seeing them being boarded in our emergency rooms we're seeing them um, languishing on the streets and then too often in our jails, as I said. 
So, you know, in, in this position, I've had such an opportunity to, to learn more about that because I, I chair the Health and Human Services Committee. I sit on judiciary and um, deal with budgets and have learned that, you know, we spend just in the state of Arizona $1.2 billion every year on this issue. 600 million of that are state funds. And yet we're still seeing these people cycle through our ERs, being boarded in them and in prison. And those costs are, are exponential there too. Yes. And about 20% of, uh, of our prisoners have mental health conditions. So what I'm hearing from families is, is a couple of things. That the system is incredibly hard to navigate. And then their needs are just not being met to the degree that they need to to stop that cycle. Mm -hmm. Well, you're bringing people with mental illness into the criminal system, so they're not dealing with the issue. There's, there's the expenditure of taking them in, but they're not addressing the, the issue. And I'm sure that there's, there's some resources available to them, but that putting them inside of the facility with, with criminals is not going to help them move forward and step up out of that situation and help their families. Exactly, and sometimes it makes it much worse. Yes. Oftentimes there is no advocate. Yes. But even when there is, what we're finding is families who advocate as best as they can are still running into brick walls on behalf of their loved one. Um, just last session, I worked with, uh, with many advocates and we, we promoted about uh, at least four mental health bills that, um, that address some of these issues. One of them is called the Caregiver's Bill of Rights that puts, to, um, puts the issue in, in words, in statute, the, the lack of attention to, um, to the families of the mentally ill and how they are being left out of the care of, of their loved one in the name of, of privacy and HIPAA. So we had another wow. bill that dealt with that and kind of rewrote our state HIPAA statute in order to make a difference there so that you know, hospital staff and other, other providers are, are obeying the law, following the law, uh, but it gives them a whole lot more leeway to, to include families in their care. Um, so that's just, that's just one aspect of, of what we're trying to do in Arizona is to better communicate with families and include them in their care. And speaking of the mentally ill and, and, and jails and, all of, and hospitals, another big issue is, is the homeless community and so many people in the homeless community are facing mental illness issues. Are there, are there bills and things that are, that are addressing those issues and how to help and how to serve those communities? There are, and um, you know, one aspect that that um, the care the the uh, the charter home idea that we were going to discuss a little bit today is is going to hopefully address some of that because a lot of the homeless are mentally ill, and so they're living on the streets, and and once they're uh, released from prison or jail, they um, they are they're unable to really find the adequate um, placement that they need um, because you know the system is set up as a recovery model mm -hmm. so once a person maybe has a breakdown if they're schizophrenic or uh, they, they decompensate they're not taking their meds they end up in the middle in the emergency room then uh, the problem that we're seeing is the big service gap we're seeing is lack of that transitional housing for them in order to help them recover so that they can live independently. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about a, an incredible advocate for the mentally ill, uh, Deborah Giesling, who started MOMI, M-O-M-I, uh, Mothers of the Seriously Mentally Ill. Okay. And her vision is to help uh, uh, advocate for young men who need that kind of housing wow. and, and provide it with the help of the community and church members uh, in particular. Yes, absolutely. And, and as a faith community, it's very important to, 
to use and address Christ's love and to not pass judgment on those people and to be welcoming and to be understanding. And is that something that going and speaking to the faith community and being a, being a, a Christian yourself, do you see that there's a little bit of a challenge and a gap still there in the outreach and the ministry from the church to the mentally ill? Absolutely, it's, it's pretty um, devastatingly large, this gap. Um, I think everybody who, uh, the church in particular has a heart for the lost, but they're not seeing the mentally ill in their churches. And there's a reason for that. They're difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. And so there's a couple things going on uh, under the leadership of um, Gilbert Mayor John Lewis, who has gathered a, a community leaders as well as the faith community to, uh, to start crisis care teams, to train pastors in how wow. to deal with families in their congregations to help their family members integrate. They have the same uh, hopes and dreams as all of us. They want a family, they want to work, and they, and they want to be part of our churches. So that's, um, that's happening. There are, uh, there are opportunities for pastors to, to have their leaders trained so that they can begin to welcome these families in without fear. And so if there's pastors or people involved in the church community watching, how do they find out how to get involved or to, to get resources to learn how to minister and outreach to the mentally ill? Well, there's a, a, a great website you can go to called P82 Project. Okay. And uh, the full name is P82 Project Restoration because the, the end goal is, well, it's several fold, but one of the main goals of P82 Project Restoration is to, um, to raise money for these homes okay. for the mentally ill. But there's a lot of other information about that ministry to How be wonderful. had. And so people can go to that. And, uh, and learn more, they can contribute, and there's a lot of opportunities for, for the faith community to, to come around families that are hurting and in need. Absolutely, and that really is our call as Christians, right? Is to love and, and to feed and to clothe and, and to be there to support our brothers and sisters whenever they're going through difficult times. And so that is so wonderful that, that you're using your platform as a state senator to do this and to help so many. So thank you so much, Senator Bartow. And uh, thank you so much at home for watching. There's been information shared at the bottom of the screen. Again, that website, P82 Project. Please make sure to, to go to that if you have any questions as a believer, if you're a leader in the faith community and would like to learn more about reaching out to the mentally ill and welcoming them. But please don't go anywhere because we'll be right back after this short message. In foster care, there are a lot of labels. Welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. If you've been with us for the first segment, thank you so much if you just happen to be joining us. Right now, we are so happy to be joined by Senator Nancy Bartow, and she is a state senator here in the great state of Arizona in District 15, as well as the chair of the Health and Human Services Committee. Thank you so much for being with us, Senator Bartow. My pleasure. Yes, it's always wonderful to have you, to hear about what you're doing here in our, in our state legislature and um, to, to hear really about what's happening because one thing I don't think a lot of people realize is as a state senator, you're out there a lot with the constituents, you're talking to people, you're hearing their problems, you're hearing their concerns, things that maybe people that are going around about in their everyday life in a nine to five job, they're not out talking to people and, and getting, getting feedback and getting questions and getting things and, and, and learning things that are actually going on in our community. So thank you for, for uh, sharing that input and that information with us and our viewers. Um, for everyone at home, our second topic is DCS Care Portal meeting the needs of families in distress. Um, what are some of the challenges for families in, involved in Arizona? Well, 
you know, with with uh, with all the focus on um, on on substance abuse yes. and uh, opioid abuse. Oh goodness, yes. We know families are 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 stressed. Their children are at risk many times, and too many, way too many, uh, end up in care. In fact, you know, with all of the attention on uh, the Department of Child Safety, which is a, a new agency, mm -hmm. the new CPS in Arizona, uh, it's made a lot of uh, headway. But there are still 18,000, over 18,000 children still in, in out of home care, care. in wow. Arizona. And so we know a lot of a lot of families are struggling, and the the issues are so so large, and 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 they seem very um, intractable. But we know that they're not; they can be overcome. So many of these families are uh, addicted. They're, they're caught up in substance abuse, uh, alcoholism, drug addiction. But the opportunities for, uh, for the church abound in this arena. Um, you know, we have to remember government didn't, didn't cause this problem. Mm -hmm. We can certainly make things worse once a child is uh, remo removing uh, removed from their home in terms of how we uh, forward the permanency process and deal with bio parents, deal with foster, foster homes. Um, but so much of the answer lies in relationship and the church plays a great role there. People don't have to be a, a foster parent or an, an adoptive parent in order to help either. Um, but in order to, to help these people uh, overcome their, their deep-seated needs, government can't always get at that. They no. need that relationship. Um, and so it's, it's really imperative to see um, more believers get involved yes. and, and answer the call. Thankfully, they are. Many, many churches are getting on board. They're becoming foster, foster homes. They are adopting. Um, they're becoming casas uh, or, or guardian ab litems. Um, they, they're becoming safe families, which is a, a, a placement that's not associated with the Department of Child Safety, but is associated with Child, the Christian Family Care Agency. Mm. There, are, there are myriad ways that, um, that Christians are becoming involved, but we need more. Yes. And one of the latest um, opportunities is called the Care Portal. It's something that we as government can't really, can't really do uh, as far as connecting a, a believer or a church with a particular family. But this does it. And it's, uh, it's kind of an incredible opportunity for, uh, for the church and for believers and even even businesses uh, who, who want to get involved and sign up. So you say a lot of people hear the word foster care and they, it's, it, it's, it sounds intimidating. You don't understand. And if, if you've never been involved in the process, if you've never volunteered, if you've mm -hmm. never taken the time to understand it, it can be a little overwhelming and a little scary to, to think about, well, how can I really get involved to help these people? You hear these numbers, over 18,000 children. I mean, just to, to hear that, is, is so sad and heart-wrenching to think there's 18,000 children over that in Arizona that don't have a home to go to, that don't have a stable mom and dad that are in either a halfway house or with foster parents or someone who's, who's, who's not their parents. And uh, how, if, the, if people aren't going to become a foster parent, if they don't have that ability, if they're afraid and they don't really know which way to go or how to get involved, how can believers come in and, and and, and start to slowly approach that process and maybe get their feet wet a little bit because it can be a little bit intimidating to, to hear foster care and 
the, the first thought you have is, oh, I have to be a foster parent, and I can't do that. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the, you know, the the space. So what can people do to to start in that process and hopefully slowly become more involved in love and make a difference in those children's lives? Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of opportunities, and um, be, you know, be, being a child advocate, a CASA, uh, is one of them, um, or a guardian ad litem, and you know, be with that child in court and advocate for them. It's a way of, of uh, brokering the relationship there mm -hmm. and, and being there, there in between, uh, that constant for, for many years because oftentimes when a child is removed from, from their biological family, they're not just moved once. Many times they're moved multitude of times which is something we're trying to address yes. um, at the legislature and and help the agency um, to to keep those moves to a minimum and permanency as quickly as possible but um, but they can they can also encourage their pastor their church to sign up on the care portal which is uh, an, another opportunity to get involved in a way where you're actually helping a family in your own church's neighborhood. Mm. And here's how it works. A, a case manager who's working with a family understands that there's a need or identifies a need and it can range from a, a multitude of things. It could be a need for a crib or it could be a, a, um, a washer and dryer. It could be a new bed for a mom who's sleeping on the couch and you know just basic needs it could be paying their gas bill for the month whatever it is that need goes to the care portal wow. and a church in that area that is signed up to help gets that email and says this family needs such and such and so churches in that area that are signed up get that need their people understand that need and somebody meets it hopefully. Wow. And not only that, but they have an opportunity to meet with that family depending on, on how involved they want to be. So the opportunity is endless. Right now there's a, there are nine states utilizing a care portal and Arizona has so far ministered to over 800 children. Wow. So there are 34 churches so far that are signed up. How do churches become involved with the care portal? It's pretty easy, I understand. Okay. There is a process, yes. but they just have to go to the website careportal.org. Okay. Just careportal.org. Yes. Okay. And they can go on, so really any church, any organization, you said businesses, anyone can get involved with that and help outreach to those people. They can. Wow, and so that's amazing because then you're using all the different networks to come together and the resources to come together. And that's truly the community coming together and, and helping the people that are in the most need. That's and right. and, and have, have, have you had an opportunity to, to visit with some of these families in the foster care system and some of the children? I mean, I realize that needs are so important, absolutely, and basic needs need to be met, but probably just the, the fellowship and a church coming in and, and speaking to these people and loving on them is probably just as important as the, me as the basic needs being met. Well, you hit the nail on the hood because, like, like I said, government can only do so much. Yes. It's all in the relationship. And we're finding that, um, that the church plays the role that the government cannot play and families are being touched, they're being healed, and they're being changed. When, when Jesus gets involved, things happen. Yes, absolutely, and that's, we were called to be his hands and feet and to love those people and to, to minister to those people and to not judge those people. I think that's probably one of the most difficult things is to, to place yourself in someone else's shoes and to realize that what 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 separates us from that person in that situation or you know but for mm -hmm. the grace of god we could be put in a situation like that or if we weren't raised in the foster care system you know we were blessed enough to have a family that was there for us there's mm -hmm. so many people that don't have that opportunity and and so that's such a wonderful resource thank you so much and and that's something that was passed through the legislature correct or that was that was ushered in through 
Uh, the CARE portal is is not a legislative okay. initiative, okay. but it is something that uh, the Department of Child Safety is utilizing. Okay. And it was started by a believer. How wonderful. And it, it's had some very, very good results so far. And as I said, it's a it's an opportunity for um, for families to be changed, for that for that cycle of abuse to be broken. Yes. Absolutely. You know, Senator Bartow, would you mind just saying a little prayer maybe for some of our viewers if they're experiencing some difficulty in their life, whether it be through mental illness that we spoke about earlier, whether it be through the foster care system, whether they're just in a point in their life where they need some encouragement and maybe to get involved in a program like this, if you wouldn't mind just saying a little prayer. Thank you. I'd be honored. Lord God, we just thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you for the opportunity to, to serve and to better understand these issues and to be able to communicate them today. And Lord, we just, we just pray, Lord, for our churches, that you would give us ears and eyes to hear and see the needs around us and the opportunities to and act on them, Lord. And Lord, we do pray for those that are hurting, for those children that are in those situations that are hopeless, Lord, that you would reach into their lives today and meet those needs, God. And we pray for those families that are suffering with family members who are mentally ill as well, God. And we pray for, for interventions that will help, that you would give us wisdom as we work on these systems and that we would do right by them, Lord, and that our churches would become a, a welcoming place, a haven for them to find their place in the world and their purpose in life. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Amen. Senator Bartow, thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you're doing in there. And as a matter of fact, one thing, your, your information has been shown at the bottom of the screen. As a state senator, people can contact your office and if they have questions or comments or something, that's something that you are, you, you, you are available to them or your office is at least to, to take questions and concerns. Absolutely, I've got a pretty open door policy and, yes. and I really, this is where I get all of my legislative ideas, yes. is from people that contact me and have an idea, have an issue. And it's so, I mean, that's what our government's supposed to be and yes. that's what I try and strive to do. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here and everyone at home. Thank you for watching. You know, it's it's something to remember that empathy and compassion can go a long, long way. And just remember, we're all in this together. We're all here on this earth and and to not pass judgment on your brother or sister, but to practice Christ's love and forgiveness and understanding and realize that but for the grace of God go you and I. And, and just to remember that whenever you pass someone on the street or you see someone in need, they're here just like you and I are. Extend a love, expand a smile, expand a hug and, and, uh, and love them. And thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you here next week on Joy in Our Town. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.